Hi, and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. And now here we have another Bayerfeng radio to look at, and this time it's the UV16. Now this radio is advertised on the internet in various different places, but it's nice to see that this radio is listed on the official Bayerfeng website, although there are no real in-depth specifications available, at least on the Bayerfeng website. Other websites that I've seen state an output power of up to 10 watts, but we all know that this will not be the case. Continue watching to find out exactly how much power this radio emits and if those transmissions are clean or full of nastiness. Now in the box, we get the user's manual and to be fair, it's not too bad. It's in 100% English and covers all of the features and functions of the radio quite well. So perfect for newcomers to the hobby. A lanyard, i.e. wrist strap and a belt clip is also included for those of you that like to wear fanny packs with a radio clip to the side. You would have noticed that the included desktop charger has a USB cable coming out of its rear end. So yeah, you can charge this radio via USB, not only from the desktop charger, but also a USB part on the radio itself. More about that shortly. The included antenna seems to be of good quality and with the specifications printed in the bottom showing 136 to 174, and then 400 to 520 megahertz, quite a standard antenna these days. However, the radio can actually transmit outside of these frequencies. The included battery fails to show capacity on the battery label, but after searching the internet, a replacement BL16 looks to have a capacity of 5800 milliamp hour, but I'm not so sure. I think it's about time I invested in some kind of battery capacity tester, just to make these reviews a little bit more detailed. You'll notice that the battery has a screw for fixing it to the radio, unlike others which we've seen which merely just clip in. However, the presence of a screw normally means it has some form of IP rating relating to water ingress. Now details on this was fairly sparse, but I don't think I'll be chucking it into a bucket of water anytime soon. So here on the back of the radio on the serial number sticker, we can see it's supported frequencies. Now this is the only place I've seen that confirms this radio transmits and receives on the 1.25 meter band, essentially making this a tri-band radio, at least for those in the US. We'll test the output power on all of the bands shortly. Now after attaching the battery, the radio does have a nice solid feel. Now I know I say that about most radios, but this one actually does. However, that's not saying that others didn't, but you know what I mean. The keys on the keypad are in a strange kind of pointy triangle design with the keypad print at a slight angle. Now this made no real difference in using the radio, but it was pretty obvious where the keys were with this style of buttons. On the left side of the radio, we have the PTT and just below it, we have a programmable function button. Below this, there is some kind of weird open slot. Now I have no idea what this is for. So if you do, then please let me know down in the comments. Now at first I thought it was for the wrist strap, but that's located at the top of the radio. On the right side of the radio, we find a speaker mic connection, which of course doubles up as a programming port when connected to a computer. Below this, we find a USB-C socket, which is used for charging the battery if you do not want to use the supplied desktop charger. On the top, we have the antenna connection, a large white LED, which can act as a torch, a status LED, which is also used for charging, and then we have a rotary control for power on and off, and of course, controlling the volume. The status LED at the top of the radio did seem pretty dim, in my opinion, and could be a little bit more obvious, especially when charging. So let's attach the antenna and turn the radio on. Now the screen will look extremely familiar to those of you that have used the UV5R before. In fact, as we go through the menu, it would appear it's the same as the UV5R. Now it's hard to show on camera due to the studio lights, but the backlight on this LCD seems pretty low to me, same as how it was on the UV5R. The three buttons in the middle are a nice touch, allowing the user to change between VFOs A and B, and also between VFO and memory mode without having to press function buttons first. The FM button on the front doesn't change modulation, but it does enable broadcast radio. So actually it does change modulation from wide or narrow to broadcast wide FM. 
Now, what goes through my mind while playing around with this radio is that this is just a UV5R transplanted into a different case with the addition of a USB charging system, almost like how the UV5R should have been when it was first released. So let's perform some tests. So first I'll transmit on the UV16 and listen on my SDR receiver so you can hear the quality of the transmitted audio. This is M0 DQW, Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey testing the Bayafeng UV16 M0 DQW testing the Bayafeng UV16. Uh, this is on a wide audio, this is on wide setting, wide setting M0 DQW. This is M0 DQW, Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey. This is testing the narrow bandwidth. This is the narrow bandwidth on the Bayafeng UV16. Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey testing. Now let's take a look at the power output on each band. Now even though the specs just say VHF and UHF, which most of us would associate with a dual band radio, we know that this transmits on the 1.25 meter band as well. At 145 megahertz, we see an output of around 3.5 watts. At 220 megahertz, we see an RF output of around 3.9 watts. At 435 megahertz, we see an output of 3.5 watts. And up at 446 megahertz, the UK PMR band, we see an output of around 3.2 watts. Now remember, this radio would be illegal to use on the UK PMR band, so I was just transmitting into a download here for this test. Checking the output purity on the 2 meter band is a little disappointing, with the second harmonica only 11 dB down from the fundamental. Now things do look to improve when we move up to the 1.2 meter band at 220 MHz, as the second harmonic is down 47 dB from the fundamental. Now on the 70 centimeter band at 435 MHz, the second harmonic was not even registering, so things are looking good there. Now I had great success in programming the UV16 using Chirp, however there wasn't a specific model available, but the BFF8HP and the UV5R both appeared to be able to read and write to the radio. Now Chirp is fantastic when it comes to programming radios, as pulling in local repeaters using the repeater book feature makes things really easy. Anyway guys, that's the Baofeng UV16. Now I've seen that there's quite a lot of different models out there, like the Pro, the Pro Max, etc. But there doesn't seem to be any specification difference. Maybe it's just the case that it's a different colour, as you can buy this radio in a multitude of colours. If you have one of these radios, let me know what you think of it. And until the next video, stay safe, thanks for watching. See you in the next one.